What is good, y'all? SUG family. It's your boy Smooth Guy Game, aka GM Smooth, the king of games, baby. We're back with another Reds reboot, man. And I'm going to, I've been seeing some of the comments saying you guys are enjoying the series, so I've looked at some of the numbers, and it might be good to go and get this series out more often. So, since we've already completed the mission on the lines rebuild, and we're just kind of defending over there and seeing how long it can go, we will push this one to two times a week and shrink that back to one. So, good news for you guys and today we'll be focusing on trying to beat the series record of 76 wins so far this season we are 72 and 37 13 and a half, or 13 games above the cardinals who are right below us and it's looking like we could potentially have this division unlocked pretty early uh, but as you can see here past series record 76 and 86 uh, improving off of 73 and 89 so my job security is low but hopefully that gm rating will be right now well, at least push us over this we should hit our yearly goal easily of being over 500 the contract goal is to reach the postseason so hopefully we'll be able to do that and extend our contract so we can keep our time going here with the reds especially if we don't win uh the world series now now we will go ahead and start by simming off a couple games until we get to game 76 that could be the potential and so far we are in the series we're with tampa bay Raphael devin is on a 15 game hitting streak so that is amazing unfortunately not leading to a victory here so hopefully he's able to go ahead and just keep that going uh sometimes i don't do every critical situation it's not always necessary uh but i hope that we can get this win very easily and quickly so we should be able to get this one in this padres series at some point i'm thinking we're two wins away after winning the series two to one and i want to hop into this box score because we did drop 10 runs on the Rays, 10 to 8 victory here so pitching was you know not a non-factor but three rbis from mustakis and aguilar with a home run again from mustakis having yet another great season making it very hard to think about letting that old man go and then the pitcher severino five innings five runs six uh, four strikeouts not a very good start and Lodato and jordan hicks both blowing saves giving up those late inning runs so it was a lot closer than it needed to be but we still pull out the dub sims ends up getting his 34 save a tone keeping that era below one so he's been a great mid-season call up for our bullpen I'm just glad we've got stability with our pitching rotation this season. That's something we lacked last year, especially in the bullpen. So it's got to be one of these first two games. Unfortunately, we lose both of those, so we will not be getting at that one. So I have to go down to the next two games here. And actually, we got a critical situation that I do want to jump into. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. We are playing the Padres, trying not to get shut out in the series. Up 5-4 to four with a chance to win this against Fernando Tatis. Lucas Sims already 11 pitches in. Deals that four seamer right over the middle as he gets some watching. Now, this is a man that could tie this game with one swing. And we've got him down 0-2 just that quick. Sims looking, gets his sign, throw goes in, and he swings and misses through the four seamer. That is win number 75. Nice, easy strike out there. They wanted us to go in and get the final out of this ball game. Maybe there was, you know, Lucas Sims was a little bit scared. He called on GM Smooth to go in and come help that out. He ended up getting three strikeouts in that evening, too. So three batters up, three straight strikeouts. No home runs in this game which is good to see we're scoring runs without necessarily needing the long ball. But Hunter Green, another great start, five innings, four runs, six strikeouts, so it's okay, but at least that ERA is still below four, so we'll definitely take a outing like that. Which switches us two games from breaking that record in the next game out, actually, we're up 2-0. Luis Severino, seven two-thirds of his way through this, but has a runner at first and second, trying to complete the shutout. He's 95 pitches in, so we'll see how deep we can go with him. But until he gets tired, it gives me a reason to take him out. We're going to ride it to the wheels fall off. So, once again, Fernando Tatis getting things started off. And as they base into the outfield, Jalen comes up firing in. That throw is going to be in time by a mile. Big time throw to the plate as he's able to go ahead and get him and knock him out. And that was an amazing throw from the rookie center fielder showing off that arm strength. And he's just looked so great in center field. No errors this season. Made a couple of uh, throwouts just like that. But that's the first time we've seen one go down at the plate. Saving the shutout for his pitcher, Luis Severino, and taking it to the bottom of the ninth without him having to throw any more pitches to maybe save that arm a little bit. This is a base hit to the outside. Farmer diving, picks it up. No throw to first base. And we've got our first base runner, Luke Voigt, coming up next. And he swings through the circle, change out of the plate. First out, 2-1 to James Wood right after him. And has a long fly ball. It'll go over Granger's head. He'll be able to get this one off the wall. The throw will come in pretty quick, so we'll keep it second and third. We're still one out over 100 pitches. And I go ahead and just go to the bullpen. I bring in Lucas Sims. Sure-handed closer, 35 saves and 38 opportunities. ERA below two. And he's looked strong this season, both against righties and lefties, both hitting under 150 against him. And that'll be a chopper. He misses it, though. Right back past his face. He was not able to grab it. Jalen coming up firing a little bit off target this time, not able to get it on the line. 
So it will be a base hit that scores a run, and this game is 2-1. to one. Still only one out, but the double play is involved. But that is a fly out. Gallo will track it, come in on the move, firing to the plate. Maybe took a little bit too long, as that will not be in time. Blown save, Lucas Sims, and unfortunately right after that, he just gets the ground ball that would have worked one better earlier. And that will be a tie ball game, so we'll have to go to extra innings to win this one. Cesar Hernandez coming up with the runner at second base. Extra inning rule. And looking to at least give us one run, if not two, as that is a fly ball going into the outfield. It will bloop down in front of the center fielder. Jalen is going to look to move up. The throw will actually come in towards the plate being cut off. So now we got runners at the corners. And Mr. All-Star MVP himself, Rafael Devers. Coming up, runners at the corners. 3-1 count. Gets a good pitch to hit. That ball will be taken out in the right center field, going back towards the wall. Warning track, it's gone. Solo. Oh, I almost said solo. Three-run home run by Rafael Devers, giving the big red machine the lead that it needs. 27th of the season, and that will give us a three-run cushion going into the bottom. Look at Joe Madden fired up. Look at the rest of the dugout fired up. Jay Allen and Hernandez is turns as we score all three, and we're able to go ahead and put up a big-time lead. And they will go ahead and bring in Brent Sutter to try to go ahead and close everything down. There's still no outs. So there's still time to put up some more runs. So they go to get a new arm to try to close the door here. 29 innings, uh, ERA over four right now and facing off against Joey Gallo. Although he strikes out a lot, that bat is still dangerous. One, two, swings and misses through the four-seamer and not able to do anything with it. Jesus Aguilar up next, one out. And he will take that sinker deep into left field. The outfit are going back and will track it down for out number two. Next up, we got Rookie of the Year, Doug Granger, swinging and missing through the circle change. And just like that, it'll go to the bottom of the 10th. And we bring in the next surest person after Lucas Sims, to me, TJ Atone. And 19 games is being caught up. ERA is at .86, 17 strikeouts, 13 walks. Has looked pretty clean. And I just wanted to see what he could do, how much of control he would have on his pitches here today. And that is a base hit going out to Allen. A lot of speed at second base, so he will have enough room to go ahead and come into the plate. And they'll score their extra inning runner. Thankfully, we got three of them, so we're not scared after that. As this goes to Farmer, gloves it over to Hernandez. Nice flip to first base. And that'll be the double play we need. Two outs is up to Fernando Tatis Jr. And he fouls off the first pitch. He sees that sinker low and away. Comes right back with a slurve low. And he will pop this one up. Gallo will come in and glove it. As that'll be win number 76. We tie up the series with the Padres. We do not go down in the sweep. You know, it was looking pretty rough those first two games and that'll set up a game with the los angeles dodgers for win number 77 in the series if you guys are ready like i'm ready i said let's go ahead and get into this full game it will be a nice series there with them but it's time to go ahead and make things work out as it is time for win number 77 hopefully if we're able to get it now if we are not able to get this in full game says we will jump into a couple more games after until we're able to get it so do we get it here with Tyler Mahaley on the mound? Now, of course, I wanted to, before we get into it, build up a little dramatic expense, the suspense. Barney Lincoln, who we drafted uh, last year in last year's draft, I believe, late. He's having a great season this year. Just finished off the complete game shutout. Six and three record here so far this season. And he's looked very, very strong compared to some of our other starting pitchers, too, as well. We got a lot of eyes to keep open. Blake Harris pitching good. Chase Petty's pitching good. And as I always preach, we have a lot of good pitchers in the minor leagues and not a lot of spots in the rotation. Now I'm starting to think maybe a good move could be to use some of that potential down there to grab more bats to help out the team be successful. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know some moves that you think I should make. Should I make moves for major leaguers or minor league prospects? Let it be known. But we will be taking on the 59 and 57 Los Angeles Dodgers here for win number 77. And that man, Rafael Devers, has all the pressure on his back as he looks to lead us to victory. Facing off to try to stop us, Bobby Miller, 13 starts, a 1-5 record, 7.49 ERA. Has not looked good at all this season. Whip is close to 2, only 42 strikeouts in 57 innings. So it's been a rough outing for him. I don't know if maybe he was a, a rookie that they called up because those starts numbers are pretty low, too, for this point in the season. So they wanted to wheel him out here today, though, against our hot bats. Maybe they're trying to gift us win number 77. Who knows? But he'll face Jonathan India started off, man. 261, 13 home runs out of the leadoff spot. 
doing exactly what we ask him to year in and year out. I wish that average was up a little higher as he takes the first pitch he sees and pops it up to the shortstop. Next, we got Cesar Hernandez, and I just wanted to highlight this. My man is hitting significantly better on the road than at home. <laughs> Look at that as you may. It is kind of scary to think that he's not enjoying the home cooking and hitting good at the home ballpark but at least today we're on the road so we'll take advantage of that good average as the first pitch he sees is a four seamer in on the hands and we jump ahead two two count wheeling throws it that's a base hit going out into right field bouncing right in front of him in our first leadoff batter of the game one out hernandez over at first base and that man devers having an mvp type season and takes a four seamer down the middle deep out into right field to the warning track as it comes up a little bit short of that as it will be a fly out. Thought he for sure had that one out of the ballpark. There's not enough wind, I guess, coming in today as Gallo comes up next and swings and misses at that splitter. Had him looking stupid as he was way too early. But now we got Tyler Maley on the mound. 23 starts, 12 and 4 record. ERA still over four, so hasn't looked good in that department. We've been able to get enough runs behind him to get him some wins. 120 strikeouts, 137 innings. That's not looking like a good ratio, but he's had a strong season. I mean, the wins and losses tells you that. He's been doing just enough to get dubs, and he'll have to face this hot Dodgers lineup as Mookie Betts leading off 294, 17 runs. That's about where I would want India at. You know, he's hitting subpar as far as the average goes, but the home runs are there at least. And the first pitch that he sees, he chops a slider right over the shortstop. India comes in for it, throw it to first, got him. I was honestly surprised we were able to get him. I could have sworn Mookie Betts had more speed than that, but they only have him at 54. I really thought he was like in the 80s or 90s. I'm not going to lie to you. Next up, Michael Brantley, though. Watches the pitch come in and then takes one off the left knee or right knee. Looks like that one bended in a little too much there. And then Freddie Freeman trying to avenge his teammate gets a base hit down the third base line. Gallo will come in and cut it off, although not cleanly. Does enough to make sure that he does not move over to third base. So with one out, runs at first and second. It's Will Smith 2-2. And he takes that slider deep into left center field. Jay Allen's giving chase and will have to play it off the wall. He'll have to get that throw in quickly as the runner's going to the plate. This might be enough time to get him. Not in time. If he throws that on his left shoulder of Stevenson, maybe he's able to get that tag in, but he had to reach across his body and come back. So that's the first runner of the ball game as that splitter gets him swinging and missing. Corey Dickerson will go sit down. Now this one will be lined out to Granger right in finding his glove as he misses it. Not able to pick it. It's his runners were at second and third. He's able to score two. Untimely error by... Doug Granger, as that allows two more runners to come in, not Tyler Mahaley's fault, and then the inning just goes all worse from here. Gets a walk on the next one. This one's chopped over to Mustakis. Can he get over to the bag? Error free, he will. But unfortunately, we have a 3 0 deficit early. We got to look to make something happen. Max to rock in, as we did have a little bit of uh, tiredness. Jesus Aguilar was tired today, so we went ahead and replaced him with Max to rock, batting 500 this season because he's only had four at bats. So I went and chose him over Kyle Farmer to let him get some PT, see what he could do. And that's going to be a fly ball going out to the outfield. 2-2 two -two count. Pitcher throws. That is a line drive. Going into right field, going back to the warning track, and it's gone. That is over the wall. Solo home run for the Big Red Machine. Max Sorok is able to take his first home run of the season and get these Reds back on the board. We can strike runs in a hurry, so a 3-0 deficit isn't even really a whole lot, especially with all nine innings left to play. Still plenty of time to get this game back on track. Now we skip ahead to the bottom of the second. Tyler Maley back on the mound looking to have a better inning than the first, seeing if making sure he's not rattled after that error caused more runs and more problems than should have been. As we got a 2-1 count here, the Jorbit lines that four-seamer out to the outfield. We just need one more strike here, 2-2 two -two count. Swings and misses at the inside slider. Great pitch there. As he's looking back strong, Mookie Betts, 3-1, and he flies this one. This is going deep into the outfield. Gallo is going to try to line this up. Leap at the wall, not in time. And I swear, they honestly, breaking the fourth wall real quick, they made that wall leap so much harder the time this year than I'm used to. But then again, the last MLB to show I played before this was like MLB like 19. So but they made it increasingly harder to make those jump throws back into the game. And it's 4-1 now as Tyler Mahaley looks to try to stop the bleeding once again. And it's already a base hit. Michael Brantley 
Taking that ball into the outfield. So we got one out. Freddie Freeman looking to make something shake here. This is a grounder over to Hernandez. Might be the double play ball we need to India, to Moustakis, and that is the double play. Great work there. And we're looking to get some offense back as they answered our one home run with the home run of their own. Let's go ahead and try to put some runs on the board. That's going to get down in the gap. That should be extra bases. Double with ease as he runs right past the ball. Thankfully, the right fielder was there to pick it up and get it back in time. As he'll just have to hold for second base. Jonathan India will come up next and he'll chop this one on the ground. And Tyler Stevens is going to actually go to third base after deciding he wanted to go to second. And they'll go ahead and get him down. Unfortunately, not able to move up there. So we will only have a runner at first base with one out. And it could have been a runner at second. If Steven said that it immediately went to third base like I wanted him to. Swing and miss, though, by Hernandez, and that's out number two. It's up to Clutch Man Devers. 0-2 count. Lines that went over to third base, and he gloves it. Unlucky hit, and it will lead to the end of the third inning. Now we go to the bottom of the third, though. Two outs. Diaz is up. He's 0-1 in the game already, and he takes this ball. Deep right field. Granger not even going to leave this as a home run. 5-1. Dodgers and just like that they've really opened this door up as that one's going to get over the third baseman's head that is a extra base hit Gallo trying to slow it down to be a triple and it'll be a two out double is when it rains it pours and they're looking to put on some more runs here on this Reds offense is they're going to steal third base in time not paying attention Todd Stevenson was a little bit slow on his reaction and he just go ahead and decide to walk Cody uh Hosey so Jorbert Vivas is up next. Two outs, 1-1 one, one count, and that ball will get away. Stevens is going to get it, try to throw over to second base. Not in time. As now we got second and third, two outs. This inning is looking like it could get crazy as soon as that's going to be a base hit getting out to Jay Allen. He'll come in to get it, come up firing to the plate. Not in time as he slides in ahead of the throw. 7-1 to one Dodgers. And that was it. I had seen enough. He did not have his stuff here today. The pitches were not going where they wanted to. The control was off. So we bring in our other starter, Luis Castillo, coming off injury. 17 games this season, a 4-3 and three record. Two saves and two opportunities, though, so he's had a little bit of bullpen work already. And we're looking for him to go deep into this ball game as he would if, if he was still a starter. This is why I say my starting lineup depth is crazy. I still have seven starters up at the major league level with, like, four or five others that I need to make plans to get up here soon. Let's not distract us from that strikeout, though, getting us out of the inning. Great job to stop the bleeding as we jump ahead and forward in this game a little bit. Top of the sixth. Jonathan India grounds this one over the shortstop. He will throw over the first base, but the throw will take him off the bag. Maybe an error on our side is what we need to get things going and finally have things go our way. Devers will come up after a lazy pop fly from Cesar Hernandez. He will line this one deep into the outfield going back, and that will get down over his head. So we got enough speed, though, going to third. He's going to try to go home. Cut off man, throw to the plate. Not in time as we slide in just ahead of the tag. And there's our second run of the ball game. So with one out, we can keep this thing going. Hopefully, it's Joey Gallo takes a four-seamer basically down the middle, takes it down the middle of the stadium, so not enough room to get out. But we will go ahead and tag up with Devers. Throw it up to the cutoff man. Throw it over to third base. Not in time. And hopefully, we can keep this going. Mustakis, he has been clutch before. He's clutch again as that's an RBI base hitting the right field. And we make this game now 7-3. to three. Only four runs down. If we can keep this going. We can come back. There's still plenty of time to go as that's a base hit into the outfield. Keeping it moving. This two-out rally is still going. That throw is offline. Maybe could have thought about going to third base, possibly, if I had wanted to be extra aggressive. Max Sorok, who had the home run earlier. This is going to be a fly ball into the right field, and it will get down over the outstretched glove. And luckily for them, be a RBI ground rule double. So off of that, they will go ahead and get their pitcher out of there. They had seen enough. That was it. He's getting up too much runs here in the sixth inning. It took him this long to crack, but we're finally able to go ahead and get to him. Go ahead and look to bring in their reliever, Blake Trennan. 55 games, has a 3.6 ERA, 42 strikeouts, 28 walks, and 55 innings. He's been able to hold things 15 times. So they're looking to hold it here as it's gotten crazy in this top of the six. Two outs, runs a second and third, and Jay Allen, the rookie. A chance to be clutch. 2-2, two -two, and he watches the four-seamer and then swings at the slider. And that ends the little run that we had going there. We got, we're able to get three runs back. And it's up to Luis Castillo to keep this game at bay to just give our bats a little bit more time to get those bats going. We got three more innings of hitting to try to get three more runs. 1-2 here, and this is a fly ball going into the outfield. 
Jay Allen's going to look to try to go chase this one down, but that'll be extra bases. Can we stop a triple here? The throw's going to come in pretty quick, and he will pump the brakes at second base. So a leadoff double. Luis Castillo trying to make sure that he stays there as he hits Mookie Betts up in the elbow, but it looked like it was going near the chin. You know, that sweet chin music is never really sweet. As that's over to Devers. Throw to second base over to first. Doesn't try to go for the triple play with the tag. It might have been a little too slow, but gets the for sure two out. So Freddie Freeman will swing at the circle change. And there it is. The ending is held at bay. Once again, Luis Castillo going strong. Now we've got a 3-0 count here to Jonathan India. Green light is on with one out. Watches the sinker right down the middle. Put it back on. And there he goes. Watches that sinker off the plate. He will walk. And Cesar Hernandez will try to get things going again like he did before. That's going to be a liner going into left field. It will get down and bounce up against the wall. So it's not going to go over. We're going to bring India around again. Just how the last uh, rally started. That'll be a base hit for an RBI. 7-5 to five Dodgers. Rafael Devers swings and misses at the sinker off the plate. He's looking to get something to drive. And it's up to Gallo and he swings and misses at the away pitch too. Only able to pick up one run there, but there's still two more innings of hitting to go. And with two outs, it's up to Max Rock. 3-0 count. And he'll go ahead and walk over to first base. Trying to get another two-out rally going. We did score three off that last time. But they'll go ahead and bring in Matt Barnes. 1.25 ERA, 41 strikeouts and 36 innings. You can't ask for much more than to bring somebody in like that. I think he's actually closer to, I think he said 37 saves out of 40 opportunities. But two outs. Jay Allen's trying to face him. And the first pitch that he sees, he takes his right back up the middle. Base hit. Runner will move up to second base. And we've got first and second two outs. We got a chance here to maybe get across one more run. Tyler Stevenson, our best hitter in the lineup. This is why you put your best hitter low key at the ninth spot. Highest average on the team, and he gets an RBI base hit here as that'll put us back within one run. We just need one more clutch hit from the top of our order. Jonathan Indy has been cold here today, but has a chance to get back hot. 2-2. Chops this one over to third base. He'll throw the second for the easy play, and they will get out of that without giving up any more. So far, we've been able to score one run each inning. If we can get one more, we'll at least set up extra inning. I almost said OT. <laughs> I mean, it's technically still over time, right? Luis Castillo against Cody. 2-0 count here. He will ground us up the middle. India diving and will not get it in time. So with one out, they got another runner on base trying to maybe get some insurance before we go to the top of the ninth. Jorbit, two for three on the day, but he will strike out on that circle change. And they'll bring up Buki Betts with a 2-1 count here. We'll watch the four-seamer off the plate and have maybe an easy chance to walk over to the bag. But he will pop this four-seamer up to Jay Allen, who will track underneath it. And we'll go into our last three outs. It starts with Cesar Hernandez, two for four, double and a single today. And we're looking to him to start off this rally, the heart of the order, to get things going. One of my favorite hitters, honestly, to hit with, too, when it comes to hitting in this lineup. One of our only switch hitters, and that'll be a base hit going into the outfield. That'll be a good way to lead things off as he's over at first base now. Raphael Devers, 2-2. Two, two. We'll watch that one. We got a full count with Joey Gallo behind him. I think you give the green light here to swing. And he takes this one. I mean, nothing else you could do but swing at that. That would have been a call strike. Unfortunately, not able to get enough on it. Getting just underneath it for a fly out there. And now it comes down to Joey Gallo. We still got only one out. So there's plenty of time. And he swings through the knuckle curving on the hands. Another strikeout. As it's up to Mike Moustakis. The original Mr. Clutch, and he swings through the splitter as well. The Dodgers go ahead and spoil win number 77 for us. We were not able to get it done. I mean, six runs is pretty impressive, especially for me playing on sticks. But gave up too many runs. That error from Doug Ranger ends up being very costly. Is without those two runs, if he had just made that catch, if everything else went the same, we would have won this game six to five. So unfortunately, Tom Manley will get struck with his fifth loss there. Five of the run seven runs being earned to him. Due to that error, and Luis Castillo finished out the rest of the game, though. Five and a third, three hits, four strikeouts, no earned runs. He's looking pretty strong, but we were not able to get things done here today. So what will we do? Coming right back after that, it'll be Tariq Screwball pitching in the next game. And we will go into a player slot scenario here to go ahead and try to see if we can get this dub. And this time I want to go with Tyler Stevenson. Or actually, not Tyler Stevenson, Jay Allen. The potential could be rookie of the year. It's been forever since we got in a player lock game with him. Let's check in with him. See how we like hitting with him. He's batting 241 this season. And maybe hitting with him is the key to getting win number 77. And we'll be facing up against Walker Bueller. 23 starts, 9-6 record, a 3.12 ERA with a 1.05 whip. And look at that, getting to him early. Already able to get one run off 
in the first inning, which is good. So Jalen will be coming up one out, batting 241 this season. Only four home runs, 22 RBIs. So the power is not really there. He's in the bottom of the order at eight, so not really too many opportunities for RBIs. But he's been hitting decent. You know, 241 is not bad in your rookie season. Just getting used to major league pitching. And Walker Bueller is the task here today as he swings through that slider for a strikeout as he has to go sit back down. But the next time he comes up, he's in a clutch situation. One out, runners in scoring position for him at first and second. And we are still up 1-0. So we skip ahead to the 2-2 count here as he's able to work it even. 56 pitches in for Bueller. And he hits that knuckle curve on the ground. And that will be a base hit. Getting into the outfield, but not enough speed over at second. And we'll have to go bases loaded with one out. So it'll be up to Tyler Stevenson, who I'm not mad at. Hitting over 300, and that'll be a base ground ball over the shortstop to second for one. Back to first base after he's tumbling and bumbling. And no extra runs there to help us out. Now we're going into the seventh inning as we need some more run support. And there's a three RBI double there from Joey Gallo. Really showing the RBIs and getting us into a good position. As by the time we come back up into this game, I go ahead and hop into the full game to go in and let's see if we can finish this out. Tariq Skubal is going on a complete game shutout right now. 106 pitches deep. And he gets the first out there. How long will he go before I decide to take him out? Well, he's got a four run cushion before I even start to think about that. Well, maybe not before I start to think. Maybe about a two run cushion before I start to think about it. But you get what I'm saying. But I'm going to get two outs here as Jacob Amaya is in. Pitcher is starting to get tired, so we're starting to look at that. Starting to maybe get somebody ready in the bullpen. This will be a ground ball into the outfield. It'll be a base hit. Next up, Freddie Freeman. 112 pitches on the day, and the second pitch he throws to him will be a fly ball out to Joey Gallo. Got underneath it, gloves it with ease, and we will take things to the bottom of the night. Three school balls still out there. Lucas Sims is up in the bullpen, though. Just in case this inning gets a little crazy and wild. But Will Smith will be the battery faces on the full count. This will be a fly ball to Granger. Tracking back as that ball is carrying to the warning track, but will be caught out number one. Two outs away from the series record. This will be a fly ball to Jay Allen. He'll go underneath it, glove it, and that's two outs. The game will come down to Cody Hosey. One for three on the day already. Two one count. As the pitch comes in, that'll be a four-seamer. Watched. Count is back even. Swings and misses through the four-seamer, and that is win number 77. It's time to celebrate. As we go ahead and break the series record of 76 wins, we've increasingly got better every season. This will by far be a huge upgrade from whatever we did last season. There's plenty of season left, but I'm glad we were able to get win 77 out early in August. And it was three school ball. Coming up and making it happen for us. That trade showing to be clutch from Detroit. As you see, his picture isn't even in there right now for whatever reason. Um, I hope nothing bad happened in real life when they took him out the game or something. But nine innings, six hits, eight strikeouts for him. We were able to get the dub. Joey Gallo, three RBIs, puts him up to 87, increasing his team lead to try to get everything back on track for that. So we will go ahead and send through a couple of easy series here. As you see, we got the Phillies up next. And I'm thinking about possibly watching that one. I don't know, though. You know, that is a chance for us to play another top seed, but we'll have time to play them in the postseason. As you can see here, we're going to simulate through Toronto, and it comes down to the final game here. Rafael Devers trying to win this ball game, and unfortunately, we don't win it. So we end up getting swept by the Toronto Blue Jays, unfortunately, you know, getting our lead even farther away from Philadelphia, who we were better than by a game, and now they're better than us by a game. But as far as if I'm worried about Philadelphia, kind of. Only postseason time will tell, as you can see here from this box score. We lost 13 to 3. This is Hunter Green start, only one inning, five on runs. Didn't get much better from the bullpen as Castillo and Lodato both gave up four as well. But we can't have these inconsistent starts for Hunter Green. I don't know which Hunter Green I'm going to get from week to week. And we got to take advantage of it when he actually is on his game and make sure that we're not, you know, we're scoring runs and we are helping them out, making them comfortable. But we simulate the St. Louis Cardinals series here again. We end up winning this series two to one once again. And just dominant faction here as we win seven to three. Great job from our bats here. Four RBIs from Rosario and a home run. That was a great game for him coming in in relief as Devers and Gallo both get more multiple RBIs too as well. And Tree Scooball, another victory for him. Six innings, two earned runs this time in the bullpen shutting the door, as well as a six to two victory uh, the next day out for us to go ahead and get this dub so we're playing strong right now everything is looking good we're closing in on 80 wins hunter green an impressive start five innings two on runs he was comfy this game eight strikeouts and Lodato with his first save 
but we are easily ahead as we're getting close to those elimination numbers. Pirates are almost out of talks. Cubs are almost out of talks. Brewers and Cardinals got a little bit of ways to go, but we're 13 and a half and 16 over them. So I'm not too worried about them. It's more so the rest of the NL and American League teams that I want to focus on and be worried about. As you can see, uh, you know, the Astros are 66, Twins are 68, the Yankees are at 78, almost at 80 wins, just like us. They've kind of caught up as the Phillies are at 79 too as well. So it's a race between us three to see who will get 80. And we face the Phillies in the next episode. Now, as far as what I want to do next time out, though, I do want to take a trip down to the minor leagues. We're getting closer to September call-ups. So next time out, I want to do some player locks to go ahead and make that happen. And then we will make our September call-ups. So there will be quite a few player locks checking in on some players. Anderson Espinosa, Jake Fraley, um, just because Jake Fraley is somebody that could be potentially called up. It's been a while since we checked in on Anderson Espinosa and his uh, growth this rookie season for him. Chase Petty has been a while since we've checked in on him. Barney Lincoln, he's impressed me really really well and he's a late round draft pick so just checking in to see what his stuff looks like our trade target jordan walker since we do have big plans for him as far as the series goes and potentially coming up to the major league roster next year josh gomez we took with our first ever pick in the series it's been a while since we had a chance to check in him so i want to get a player lock with him as well and then blake Hare, who we actually drafted in the same draft class as um barney lincoln and everybody uh, we have never checked in with him. I'm, I honestly forgot that I was the one that drafted him. I thought he was on the team stock. So we haven't even checked in with him. So I'm, great. I'm glad he's doing great at AAA. We'll go ahead and get a start with him. So if you guys are ready for all that action that we got next time out, man, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below for your boy. And I will be back for another episode of the Reds Rebuild very soon. So it'll be Tuesday and Sunday with this. Lions Rebuild on Thursday. I'll catch you guys in the next video. It's been your boy SGG, the king of games, a.k.a. GM Smooth. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. I'm out.